Welcome back to the Pacific Disaster Center Disaster Aware Training Video Lesson 2 Disaster Aware Navigation and General Functions. To begin this lesson, we will go to the PDC homepage located at www.pdc.org. From the PDC homepage, we will launch the Natural Hazards and Vulnerability Atlas by clicking on the globe icon located in the lower left corner of the front map. This will open up a new web browser displaying Atlas. As mentioned in Lesson 1, Disaster Aware monitors over 65 authoritative sources for incidents and if deemed potentially hazardous to people, property, or assets, Disaster Aware will post them as an integrated active hazard. These active hazards are displayed in the geospatial map frame as square icons, such as these hazards here. All other incidents that did not meet the potential hazard criteria are still displayed in the map frame, but using smaller icons, such as circles and triangles. By displaying these incidents in the map frame, disaster managers can see at a glance the type, severity, and location of active hazards occurring globally or in a specific area of responsibility or interest. You can also hover over the map icon to display the icon map tips, which will display relevant information on that hazard or incident. You can also click on the link provided to obtain additional information. There are a variety of different ways the user can navigate the map frame. The first is by using the compass rose to the left. Here you can click on the arrows to move your map around, or called changing your map extent, and use the gray slider bar to zoom in and out, or changing the map scale. The tools palette, open in the lower center of your map frame, also contain navigation aids. Starting from the fourth tool from the left, the zoom in allows you to draw a box and change the map scale. Pan recenter allows you to change your map extent. Zoom back will replay the user's previous extent. And the home button will take the user to the default extent, which will either be the application default as seen here, or the default bookmark established as a user preference. More will be discussed on bookmarks and how to create them in lesson four. In the lower right hand corner, there's the Gazetteer, which you can type in your location place name or your lat long. When you hit enter, the map will navigate to the specified location. You can also use your mouse wheel to change your map scale, zooming in and out. The upper right portion of Atlas is known as the menu bar and provides buttons to various different types of information palettes. By default, the layers palette is already open, but it can be hidden and redisplayed by clicking on the button in the menu bar. Within Disaster Aware, there are two different types of data, dynamic and static. Dynamic information is updated automatically by Disaster Aware so that the most current information is displayed in the map frame. Examples of dynamic data were previously discussed when we talked about the integrated active hazards and in incident events. Here you can find the integrated active hazards in the layers palette, and by seeing the check in the box, you can notice that the layer is already turned on. Underneath the folder heading Recent Active Events, you can find your incident events such as earthquakes, active volcanoes, which are already turned on in your map frame, recent hotspots or potential wildfires, this layer is not turned on, thus there is no check in the box, and layers for tropical storms. The other type of information available is called static data. Static data is not automatically updated by Disaster Aware, but is rather updated by a GIS professional on some interval. Examples of static information can be found under the folder heading Base Map Data and would include layers such as cities, infrastructure layers for power plants, and for transportation. 
In lesson three, we're going to take a much more in-depth view on the different types of dynamic and static data available in Disaster Aware. As you noticed, when you hover over the layer name, the layer map tips will appear, providing a brief description of the data layer. If you are interested in seeing more information on the data layer, or what's called the metadata, you can click on the link provided and view the metadata abstract or get access to the full metadata. By clicking on the legend button in the menu bar, your legend palette will appear and you'll get a better understanding of the different symbology being displayed in your map frame. You can also organize your desktop by using the vertical gray bar to the right. By clicking and dragging, you can resize your map frame and create blank space to dock your palette. Just as with the active hazards, your icon map tips will display by hovering over any point feature in Disaster Aware. You can also query for additional information by using the Identify tool located in, in the Tools palette. Here you can draw a box around your point features of interest, and your information will be displayed in the Results palette. Notice that your results are categorized per data layer heading, and they can be collapsed and expanded as necessary. Multiple identified queries can be conducted, with the results displayed under a new and con consecutive identify tab. Continue to explore the buttons in the menu bar, however, please take note of the question mark to the far right. This button will drive you to the Disaster Aware Help Documents and Reference Guide, which will provide much more detail about Disaster Aware than what is provided in these training videos. This completes Lesson 2. Please join us for Lesson 3, Disaster Aware Information Content, where we will explore in more detail the different types of data available and general functions of the layers palette. We hope that you will join us. Thank you.